Hello everybody and welcome back to another GeekerWatt video. Today I'm going to be taking all these parts behind me and building an insane $1200 gaming PC build for 2020. I'm going to kind of guide you through the parts I picked and why, put the system together and then install loads of games on this machine so you can see exactly the kind of performance that you could expect if you built this system for yourself. But either way, sit back, relax and let's get straight into it. Are you ready for us? Are you ready for us? We can be something new. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for us? We can be something new. I need to give a huge shout out to Zotac and NVIDIA for sending over the RTX 2060 Super after they found out I wanted to use one for this build and helping make today's video possible. This one in particular is a great value and great looking mini card. Ray tracing is coming to more and more games than when the RTX cards first launched and with games more optimised the performance hit should be more minimal but we'll explore that in the gaming benchmarks later on so do hang tight. Ray tracing basically reimagines the way light is dealt with in games and we need this RTX card to get ray tracing. It makes stuff like shadows, reflections and explosions way more realistic by tracking the path of light from the particles in the explosions and stuff themselves. It's bonkers. RTX also works with the new free-to-play COD Modern Warfare Battle Royale, which I've played so much of this week, it's so seriously fun. And thanks to ray tracing, stuff like the light, particularly off the tall buildings in the city scenes, is super immersive. It's kind of trippy at times. Providing we get the rest of the build right, the GPU's the most important part of any gaming PC, and you guys always ask me to touch on it just a little earlier. So here we are, we'll come back to the GPU later, but let's get the first components of the build installed. The first components I'm gonna grab is our CPU, motherboard, and this, uh, the memory or the RAM for this build. The motherboard is MSI's B450 Pro VDH Max. It's not the first time I've used this motherboard and uh, that will become apparent why in a moment's time. This motherboard's got all the features we need, four RAM DIMM slots, a Gen 3 PCIe slot and support for M.2 SSDs. Most importantly though, it can house our Ryzen 5 3600X CPU with a base clock of 3.6 that boosts up to 4.2. With six cores and 12 threads, it covers the single and multi-threaded base Cases perfectly. The final thing I want to pop in while our motherboard is out the case and still easy to access is our memory or our RAM. Now this is the first sign of kind of a bit of a white theme in this build, something that's becoming more popular and that I'm trying to do a little bit more of. This is Corsair's Vengeance Pro uh, RGB and I mean Look how fantastic that looks. It's just incredible. We're gonna pull back notches on uh, our two and four RAM DIMM slots and line the notch on the DIMM with the notch on the motherboard. A click into place will secure the RAM. You might need to give it a bit of pressure, but definitely don't force it. And just like that, we're pretty much sorted. Now it's time to move the motherboard assembly, as it's often called, into our case. In order to do that, we want to take off basically all of the case side panels to make things nice and easy to access. But this chassis in particular is the Corsair 280X, one of my favourite cases ever, and I think you'll see why when this thing's powered up and all the RGB kicks into action. Cause it's hard to read when you've got tired eyes. With the case now looking pretty bare, all we need to do is grab the IO shield from the motherboard box and clip it into the back of the case here before finally uh, allowing us to install the motherboard. Mm -hmm. 
The next component on today's hit list, if you will, is our CPU cooler. This is the Cooler Master ML240R, and I would go as far as to say this is the best value uh, all in one liquid cooler you can buy right now. And because of the kind of space constraints here, there isn't really enough clearance for a traditional uh, air cooler, tower cooler, which leaves you down the AIO route. If you want slightly better RGB integration across the whole of your system, Corsair may be the way to go. But as far as value for money is concerned, the ML240R is a winner. So then, the CPU cooler is in. Now we have got a couple of spare RGB fans that um, you could put here, there is enough room for them, but you'll see why I won't later. I might actually pop them down the bottom, but we've got loads of different options and we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Next up though, it's time for this, our graphics card. Now, let me clear the table first. This right here is the Zotac RTX 2060 Super. Now, I'll link it along with all the other components in the description below, but this version particularly is really great value. They actually brand it as their mini version, but it does have two fans on and is gonna not look out of place, shall we say, in today's gaming PC build. Now, when Zotac and NVIDIA found out that I wanted to do this build and I wanted to use an RTX 2060 Super, they were like, hey James, that's, that's great news, but can we like sponsor a little bit of the video and get you to talk about ray tracing in 2020 and kind of how even on the 2060 Super, which is a more affordable RTX card, you can still get some great ray tracing performance. I'm gonna cover ray tracing a bit more in the gaming benchmark section of today's video, but you can kind of see some comparisons with it on and off. So like earlier, you know exactly what to expect. For the next step in today's build, things are about to get really interesting. Now, I'm not talking about the power supply, as, as good and important as it is, but these. These are from Lee and Lee, and they're their new Strimmer? Strimer Plus, who knows, who cares, frankly, they're Strimmer uh, Plus RGB extension cables. Now, they are an optional step, and I haven't popped them in with the budget, but I'm really, really eager to show them off, and I think you guys are gonna love them. So let's screw in the power supply, get everything plugged up, and then see what these things look like. With pretty much all of our components installed, all that's left to do is install our storage. Now, most people in a build like this would go for a hard drive and an SSD, but that can get quite expensive. With SSD prices now as low as they are, a one terabyte SSD like this one from SanDisk would do the job nicely all on its own. This isn't the fastest SSD out there, but it's pretty affordable and great value for money. So let's get the SSD installed, get our cable management done, and boot the system up before playing some games on it and seeing how it performs. But roll the montage. Next up, let's take a look at how well this system performs. First in non-RTX, non-ray tracing titles, and then a little bit later in games that support that technology. First up is GTA 5. I've benchmarked all the titles today at 1440p because I think that's the ideal resolution for the 2060 Super. It means you get the higher resolution and higher detail, sharper image, but also retain quite a lot of frame rate. 4K gaming on a uh, 2060 Super is more than possible, but 1440p I think is where it's at. 
We are seeing in the region of 70 to 90 frames per second. Uh, it's consistently above 60 around the 71, 72 mark, but that of course varies on a scene by scene basis, whereby sometimes you'll get a little bit more FPS, sometimes a little bit less, depending on just how much stuff has got to be rendered in, shadows, details, that kind of thing. Next up is Overwatch. Here we're seeing 130 to 150 frames per second at 1440p ultra settings. I must admit I love Overwatch, although I'm pretty pretty terrible at it. Um, 130 to 150 FPS clearly indicates you could jump up to 4K and still get some very, very enjoyable frame rates. Next up is Project Cars 2, a game I'm thankfully a lot, lot better at. Here we're seeing 110 to 160 FPS at 1440p Ultra, which implies you can either crank uh, some more kind of anti-alias settings up a little bit, enable V-Sync for that locked 60 FPS, or jump up to 4K and still get a really great gaming experience. I'm a big fan of Project Cars 2. It's super duper realistic. When you cheat, for example, it makes you go back a few places. And the graphics are great. Regardless of system spec, it's actually quite an easy game to run. So if you've got an APU, which very much isn't this build, then that will also work well. I've also got Fortnite on my list today. I know it's a bit of a controversial game. Some people love it, some people hate it. But for those of you that love it, it's good news. 80 to 100 FPS at 1440p epic gives you a great gaming experience. It Honestly, it really can't be faulted. I love the graphics of Fortnite, probably a little bit more than Apex Legends because it's a bit more fun, a bit kind of more fictional, less realistic, but somehow that's kind of a good thing in my brain. Next up is Apex Legends. Um, despite the fact I prefer Fortnite's overall look and feel, the Apex graphics are more realistic and do look better on this machine. 100 to 130 FPS at 1440p Ultra, and you can see it's kind of a similar story across the board. There's a lot of headroom to pop up anti-aliasing settings, enable V-Sync, or even game at 4K. The choice really is yours. Next up are our ray tracing compatible titles, the game that support that fancy NVIDIA technology that reimagines and sort of relooks at the way light is dealt with in games, making reflections and shadows and stuff like fire a whole bunch more realistic. First up is Battlefield 5. This is something you will have seen a lot with ray tracing. It was the first game out to support the technology and thus has been showcased a whole bunch. It is good news though. I first launched the title up, let it sort of automatically figure out what settings it wanted to use. And at 1440p medium with V-Sync enabled and ray tracing and DLSS, the technology that kind of gives you ray tracing a bit of a, a boost in the FPS department, to put it simply, and I was seeing a pinned 60 frames per second. This is really good news because it shows us that there's some room to get higher than 60 FPS at higher settings with a bit of fiddling about. So I disabled V-Sync, kept it at 1440p, and cranked the overall settings to high, and bingo, 74 frames per second. Now that is one hell of a playable experience. It's a similar story at 1080p where you'll see no V-Sync, high settings around 92 FPS. And But going back to 1440p, you can see here the way the light and reflections and the puddles, for example, look a whole bunch better. I think realistic shooting games like this kind of World War II inspired uh, sort of sparks flying everywhere off the end of shotguns and that kind of thing is where ray tracing really excels. I was pleasantly surprised to see though that RTX certainly held its own in our next title, Call of Duty's Modern Warfare, despite its more futuristic setting, uh, which can often lead to less realistic graphics. Thankfully though, that's not the case here. In the new uh, Battle Royale mode that they've got, which is free uh, on the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I was seeing 120 to 160 frames per second, where the sun kind of peeks through buildings or casts shadows off trees is where ray tracing will blow you away. As I said here, we're getting basically double 60 FPS at all times, so 4K on Modern Warfare is probably a really good option as well. But people always say to me that these first person shooters, they want to get that higher FPS, and Modern Warfare and even Battlefield 5 prove that despite having ray tracing enabled and the extra performance overhead that brings, you can still get sort of eSports kind of league frame rates if you're prepared to a game at 1440p rather than 4K. Oh my goodness, what a sacrifice. 
not, uh, then you can get 120 to 160 FPS in some ray tracing enabled titles. Now that is mental. But that I think though just about wraps it up for today's GeekerWatt video. If you did enjoy it, a big old like rating would be great. Make sure to get subscribed. And as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.